The technical and traditional word for it is calumny, which is to say the mean-spirited and unjust accusation of another person. Precisely because it's a violation of both charity and justice, calumny is properly categorized as a mortal sin. You know, years ago when I first started posting articles and videos on the internet, I frequently engaged the so-called new atheists. Predictably, they weren't overjoyed at my contributions and they often commented pretty bitterly on my sites. Sometimes atheist influencers would direct their followers to fill the com boxes of my videos with disparaging and ad hominem remarks. Well, after dealing in more recent years with some acerbic Catholics in these same forums, I can honestly say I prefer the atheists. Now, I must admit that the vitriol, negativity, personal attacks, and outright calumny that come regularly from self-professed Catholics is just dismaying and disedifying in the extreme. The most recent example is the reaction to an article that I wrote last week regarding the right relationship between clergy and laity in their shared engagement of the culture. Relying on the Vatican II document Lumen Gentium, which I extensively cited, I calmly made my argument. I attacked no one. I indulged in no character assassination. I never made an ad hominem remark. I simply laid out the clear teaching of an ecumenical council and tried to apply it to our present situation. Now, was my article susceptible to criticism? Of course. As Cardinal George used to say, in the spirit of St. Thomas Aquinas, no matter what you argue, there's always a said contra, right? but on the contrary. He meant that even the most finely articulated demonstration has left something important unsaid or some angle unexplored or some nuance undeveloped. And so are people justified in bringing up objections and counterarguments? Naturally. But in the wake of my article, I must say, armies of commenters, encouraged by certain internet provocateurs, inundated Twitter and all of my social media sites with wave upon wave of the most hateful, vituperative, venomous words that you could imagine. I was called spineless, gutless, cowardly, and that's just to mention the most benign and unobscene remarks. For four days, I had to assign three of my co-workers at Word on Fire full-time simply to remove the most poisonous comments, time that they could have spent on much more fruitful evangelical efforts. Now, I realize it's much easier to engage in this sort of mean-spirited mob action than it used to be. Years ago, if you were angry about an article that you read and you really wanted to let the author have it, you would have been obliged to write a letter, find an envelope and a stamp, send your diatribe to the editor of the paper or journal, and then you would have been at the mercy of that editor, who most likely would have thrown your cruel and poorly argued letter away. Now, all you gotta do is type your words into a computer and they appear in a matter of seconds, unedited, for all the world to see. And furthermore, you can do this more or less anonymously. Hence the prevalence and virulence of Twitter mobs. But may I, as a spiritual father, issue a kind of pastoral cry of the heart to my fellow Catholics who practice this sort of thing. Cut it out! The kind of attack that I endured last week, and many other people endure these, and they remain sadly rampant on social media, is just a moral outrage. The technical and traditional word for it is calumny, which is to say the mean-spirited and unjust accusation of another person. Precisely because it's a violation of both charity and justice. Calumny is properly categorized as a mortal sin. Can I pose a question to the army of Catholics who posted outrageous comments on my social media sites? Though I know you want to appear tough-minded in front of your colleagues, can you honestly say when you reread your remarks that you're proud of them? Honestly. Now look, I've been at this social media game for a long time. 
I'm well acquainted with Harry Truman's famous comment, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. I get it. When you make an argument in the public space, you got to expect opposition. But once again, everybody, there's a sharp distinction between legitimate argument and calumny. A real argument involving the marshalling of evidence, the citation of authorities, the fair and careful reporting of one's opponent's position, etc., is morally praiseworthy. For real argument fosters both truth and love. It seeks to shed light on what is really the case, truth, and to invite others to see more clearly. It's a type of love. Calumny, on the other hand, is indifferent to truth and is inimical to love. And if I may be permitted a final observation, I can't imagine a more effective evangelical countersign to the wider world than the kind of mob action that I witnessed last week. Can you imagine a non-Catholic, a non-Christian, a religious seeker, a non-believer coming onto one of my social media sites out of genuine curiosity and seeing how Catholics were responding to a bishop who had made an argument? Who could possibly forgive them for thinking, I don't want any part of that group? You know, as Tertullian reminded us long ago, what first attracted many pagans to Christianity was the obvious love that Christians showed to one another. What effect do you think Catholic Twitter mobs are having? So look, everybody, I understand people are passionate, especially about religious matters. But when it comes to this commentary, we always must keep truth and love in the forefront. Catholics on social media, you need to pick up your game. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I encourage you to share it and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.